I have created a free cluster using MongoDB Atlas. This is a shared tier with less performance and storage, and can be used for learning purposes. Let's open MongoDB Compass and start creating the necessary database objects needed for our app. Let's copy the connection string and connect to it. Let's create a database. Now let's create the collections. We need two collections. One to store department details and another one to store employee details. Let's start with department collection. Let's add some data into this collection. It will have two fields, one to store department ID and another one to store department name. Now let's add employee collection. It will have employee ID, employee name, department, date of joining, and photo file name which stores the uploaded profile picture file name. Let's create the .NET Core Web API project. Let's open up Visual Studio first. Click on Create a new project. Choose ASP.NET Web API Core. Choose appropriate folder. We might not need HTTPS for now. Now let's take a look at some of the important files. All the dependencies and packages needed for our app can be found in the dependencies folder. Launch settings.json file contains the details of how the project should be started. Controllers folders contains controllers in which we write our API methods. We generally keep the configuration details such as database details in app settings.json. The program.cs contains the main program which is the entry point of our app. Also, it creates webhost which basically helps the app to listen to HTTP requests. The startup class configures all the services needed for our app. Services are basically reusable components that can be used across our app using dependency injection. It also contains the configure method which creates our app's request processing pipeline. We need to make a couple of changes in startup class. One is to enable the cores. By default, all web API projects come with a security which blocks requests coming from different domains. We are basically writing instructions to disable that security and allow the requests to be served.
We are also making one more change to the serializer class to keep the JSON serializer as our default. We might need to install a NuGet package to do this. Let's import the namespace. Now let's simply run the project and check if everything works fine. We see that the project works as expected and we see the JSON result from one of the sample controller method. We need to install a NuGet package called MongoDB driver to work with MongoDB. Let's also add the connection string to our MongoDB cluster. Now let's add the models needed for our app. Let's create folder called models. Let's create the department model first. It has department ID and department name. The MongoDB also generates a unique object ID for each record. Now let's create the employee model. It has employee ID, employee name, department, date of joining and photo file name. Let's write the API methods for department's collection. Let's create an empty API controller. In order to read the connection strings from app settings file, we need to make use of dependency injection. Now let's create the get method to retrieve all data from department collection. We are first creating a Mongo client using the existing connection string to our cluster.
We will make use of get collection name and pass the collection name. Finally, we are returning the data as JSON result. Let's test this method in Postman. We see that get method works as expected. Let's now create post method to add new department. The post method will receive department object from form body. We will get the count of records in the collection to generate new department ID. We will make use of insert one method to insert new department. Next let's implement put method to update the existing record. We will define the filter and update criteria. And make use of update one method and pass the filter and update criteria. Let's finally implement the delete method. We need to make changes to the attribute to get ID from the URL. We will use the delete one method and pass the filter criteria. Let's now test the API methods. Let's use post method to add new department. We see that the post method works fine and we can verify it by using the get method. Let's test the put method to update a record. We see that the put method works as expected. Finally let's test the delete method. The delete method also works fine as expected. Let's implement the API methods for employee details screen. Let's add an empty API controller. Let's copy the contents from department controller and make changes accordingly.
Now let's test our APIs. The get method works fine. Let's test the post method to insert a record. Post method works fine as expected. Now let's test the put method and update a record. And finally let's test the delete method. The delete method also works as expected. Let's now write an API to upload the photos. Let's create a folder to store photos. To be able to use this folder to store and retrieve photos, we need to add some instructions in the startup class. Now let's write the API method. I am giving a custom root name for this method. And this is a post method. If there is any exception while saving file, I will simply return the default anonymous picture file name. We are going to extract the first file which is attached to form data. We need to again use the dependency injection to get the application path to photos folder. Once the file is saved, we will simply return the file name. Let's now test the API by uploading an image file. We see that the upload was successful and we can see the image in the newly created path. 